Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Hi. Okay. Good to and see you. So I share slide and okay, slide show. Okay. Chao Moon, do, so, do we have to do something here to can you to mirror the screen? Okay. We're, we're trying to fix uh, an issue with, with the screen. We'll be ready in a couple of minutes. Uh huh. Okay. Also, Chamong, also the audio. I don't think it's. Audio? Yeah, it's okay. pretty low. <laughs> okay. Even audio is not low. <laughs> we'll be ready in a few minutes. Thank you for waiting. Now you can. Now you can see. Can you hear us? Can you, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. So is, it, is, it, is it a bit? You can hear me? 
Yeah, it's a bit, uh, we, we, we would like to have it a bit louder. So it, I don't know if it's your, you can, can you raise your speaking volume on your side? Hello. <laughs> yeah, it's, Hello. It, no, it's probably the, it's probably from this side. Maximally volume down technically. So maybe Kuni should talk a little loud. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that we, on our side, that's the top uh, of the notch of the volume that we can have. So. I should speak louder. You should. Yeah. You should speak louder. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. So it's a pleasure to have with us for uh, even though virtually for the last uh, talk of the day. Professor Kaneko, now at the uh, Niels Bohr Institute in uh, Copenhagen. Uh, and uh, his, his talk will be about uh, the theory for uh, development, cell differentiation, and reprogramming. So please, Kuni, thank you. OK, thank you. So I try to speak louder. Yeah. And so I, today, I talk about this dynamical systems theory for cell differentiation and the reprogramming. And I'm now in. Niels Bohr Institute at Universal Biology Group. And I just explain a little bit on universal biology, just in a minute. And so usually life system consists of many, many components. For, for example, in a cell, there are many, many, many yeah, molecules and that interact with each other. And But as a cell total, it becomes a kind of stable structure. So the guiding principle here is macro micro consistent. So molecule cell, so molecule produces cell, but cell gives some kind of constraint to each molecular rea reaction. So, so microscopic, very diverse components and high dimensional. And macroscopic, so there is some kind of unit to sustain and reproduce as a whole. So probably in some cases, there can be low dimensional description. So that's the, approach to universal biology I'm taking. And by that, so for example, molecule cell, and with this consistency between molecule and cell reproduction, so we can have some kind of general law or some kind of general properties. And so cell to multicellular, and in the case of evolution, so genetic change is very slow. And phenotype dynamics or development is much faster within a generation. But still, there is some kind of consistency with so different time scales. And actually, I'm mostly working on this kind of evolution these days. But today, so I talk about this level, cell to multicellular organism. And for that, so important phenomena there is cell differentiation. So initially, there is some cell type, so stem cell. Uh, so it's called pluripotent cell. So that can produce diverse types of cells through the developmental course. So initially this cell type. And then after some time, there are several cell types appear. So they have the same gene, but still they have a different cell types. And actually in 1957, the famous biologist Waddington wrote a book, The Strategy of Genes, and he introduced a very famous picture, epigenetic landscape picture. So that's a kind of general, this yeah, valley, shallow valley, and then branching to several small higher valleys. And also he proposed to discuss this in terms of dynamical systems. And also he tried to understand 
how this complex system is controlled by genes. So, but at that time, it was difficult to make a theory advance. And after that, so maybe there are many studies on dynamical systems. And in this picture, each body, so attracted is expression, gene expression or protein exp concentration is attracted to a certain level. And that is called, so this at attractor in terms of dynamical systems. And so, so there are several studies for this, so many attractor systems. But another important thing in Waddington's picture is that this valley changes in time. So the landscape changes in time. And actually, Waddington coined the term homeoresis rather than homeostasis. And this is robustness in past or developmental process itself or landscape itself. So, but what this landscape really means? So these days, many biologists draw this diagram, but actually what that means is not fully understood. And probably X axis, this axis, is some kind of collective expression variable of many genes, protein concentration, loss, maybe low dimensional distribution for that. And this height, maybe it's a kind of changeability. If it goes down, it cannot change so much. It's a more robust or less plastic. So, or you can say that this is, if you have some kind of probability for this X, then log one over PX, maybe the, so, potential. But the question is why this axis? And this means that there is dynamics, past dynamics in X, but there is no change of this dynamics itself. So there are two possibilities, I think. So this slow change is due to the developmental process and due to this number of cell in this development. And actually, we worked on this kind of picture. So initially, single cell. And as the cell number increases, these cells interact. And this cell-cell interaction changes the dynamics itself. And by that, we have seen that initially pluripotent state and then some attractor state appears. So that's discussed here. But, oops. Something strange happens. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. But another possibility, and that is discussed these days, is that there is a process called epigenetic change. And that's the change in chromatin structure or how this gene expression is feasible. And that changes slowly. This is another possibility. And so we try to discuss this point. So basically, with this epigenetic modification, there are some histone modification, methylation, and et cetera. And that changes feasibility that a gene is expressed. So openness chromatin over something. And so maybe by co-screening this process, we assume that there is low variable representing the feasibility of expression itself. And this changes with me. So that's another possibility. And we try to focus on this. And by focusing on that, the basic question we want to address is that, OK, of course, there is landscape, so robustness to, of each valley to perturbation. So that's the first requisite. And then, so multi-level robustness. That means when you have a development, this number of cells in each valley is robust to perturbation or initial condition or something. And then homeolysis, how this branching process is stable. And also, there is some kind of hierarchical branching process. So initial stem cell, and there are two levels, and three levels, and higher levels. So that is necessary to understand development. OK, so we consider a simple model. So as for gene expression dynamics, there are many studies using some kind of gene regulation network. So that's basically simplified, some kind of activation and efficient. So something like that. So some threshold dynamics, 
of this hyperbolic tangent or and Jij gives that network structure. If it's positive, so this expression of this gene activates this other gene, okay, the red, red one. And if it's negative, if this gene is expressed and this protein is produced, this suppresses the expression of this. So this model or kind of variant of this model have been exten extensively studied. And in this case, theta i is the threshold for this expression. So actually minus threshold theta i. So with this change, it's more easy to be expressed or harder to be expressed. So usually this is assumed to be constant, but considering this epigenetic modification, we assume that theta i is also a variable and it can change slowly. And furthermore, it is known that if one gene is expressed, sometimes it's more easily to be expressed. So the threshold decreased. So we assume that there is some kind of positive feedback process between theta, so x to theta. So something like this equation, very simple equation. So that means if expressed, easier to be expressed. If repressed, harder to be expressed. Okay, and this V is the rate of efficient feedback or speed of this theta change. Then, oh, okay. We consider simply fixed point analysis. So first, so this is zero and this is zero. So that means AX equals theta. And then if we plot this, and if A is large, so feedback is strong, then all xi plus minus one, close to plus minus one, so plus one is expressed, minus one is no expressed, are fixed point attractors. But the question here is that initially, this epigenetic modification is set to zero in the stem cell. And then through this feedback process, theta changes. Then what attractors are accessible? So that's the question. And if V is very large, so this is very fast. And so anyway, this AX theta is reached. Then all two to the N states are reachable. So X equals each XI is plus or minus one. So every yeah possible bit patterns are reachable. But actually, what we are concerned here is that epigenetic process is slow. So we need to consider V small limit. So the question is that what happens there? Okay, initially assume that this theta equals zero state dynamic has just a few fixed point attractors. And then with this fixed point attractors, so this process is with this positive feedback, this is stabilized. So basically, if you have two fixed points and then each theta for this changes to stabilize this with this process. So you can produce us so many or few attractors. But in this case, so if you start from a initial condition here, then, okay, sorry, initial condition here, then it can just go here. It can just go here. So for each basin of attraction, only one type of fixed point attractor is generated. And then, so the number of ratio of each fixed point is not stable depending on initial conditions and no robustness in time course, no hierarchical splitting in time. So we cannot support what in density. Then we consider the case that initially this dynamical systems with theta zero is a limit cycle. And in this case, first limit cycle attractors are converged and then cover the phase space. And then some fixed points attractors are generated and stabilized. And we will show that this case, the requisite of Waddington's landscape is satisfied. So first, we consider the minimal case, just the two genes. And so there are cases that in this plus and minus, and in this case, so 
nuclear in and state spaces x1 and x2 is something like that for theta equals zero. And so it shows this kind of limit cycle here. And we have nucleine to nucleine, and this there is some kind of limit attractor cycle attractor here. But this is for fixed theta. And if t x changes here, then theta changes. And if x goes here, theta changes. And with this, actually, we found that finally two fixed point attractors here and here are generated. And actually, it's slight change of initial condition can produce this and this. So independent of initial conditions, we can have this with mostly half and half in this case. So this can be understood in dynamical systems as follows. So theta i, so in this equation, basically gives the nucleine. So with the theta change, so nucleine goes to one side. So with this, so theta changes, this nucleine goes up and goes up, or in this case, so this nucleine goes to the left and goes this up and it goes here. So depending on each state, nucleine motion changes. And finally, it produces this fixed point, this fixed point, or this fixed point. So that's how these two stable states are generated. And actually, this is a, just a simple limit cycle case. But if you have some kind of a little bit more complex limit cycle case, then so initially, okay, this limit cycle and limit cycle is separated to sub limit cycles, and then it's fixed. So in this case, so three fixed points are generated. So basically from this global limit cycle, so separation to two sub limit cycle occurs first, and then three. So we have hierarchical splitting. So, and okay. And then in this case, so with this hierarchical attractor generation from limit cycle, so this satisfies homeoresis. And with this step, given time span, this splitting occurs. And also, even for depending on, so changing initial condition, so if you take some initial condition, initial distribution of cells, and then finally, these, in this case of four, five, six, seven attractors in this PCA plot is, so actually in this case, oh, sorry, n equals 10 genes, and we plot the PCA of this Xi to X10. And then, so basically you have these uh, uh, eight attractors, eight, eight cell types, and then this is dense. So that means these all have higher cell population and these three are less. So this is independent of initial cell distribution disappear. But in the case of fixed point, as I mentioned, such kind of robustness in the distribution does not appear. So basically the distribution is independent of initial condition we have taking initial con different initial condition, but this distribution is same. So orange and blue one, same. Okay, so from that, by taking the pro PCA of gene expression dynamics of X and distribution of PX and taking log PX, we can draw the Waddington landscape, something like this, like this. And so in this case, again, so we can have a stable, robust Waddington's landscape, starting from limit cycle oscillatory behavior. So that's a theoretical consequence. Okay, now another problem here that is the reprogramming. So this is a kind of very deep question in statistical physics also, because usually these cell types are fixed and exact so Initially, this pluripotent cell can produce many other cell types, but this can produce only this type, and this can produce only this type. So there is irreversible direction of development. So changeability or pluripotency is large, and here it's zero, it's fixed. 
So in the normal development process, it's always irreversible. But these days, so by Takashi and Yamanaka, they found that induced pluripotent stem cells. So they found a way to reverse the irreversible process. And actually, it's not so difficult. They overexpress few genes. So Xi is changed for a while and then somehow return to the original state. So there are basic questions here. So how, so actually in his case, in their case, they overexpress just four genes. So without a operation of epigenetic modification. So only just the control of these few genes, few variables, of many, many dynamical systems, many genes, so variable, they can produce to come back to the original state. And furthermore, this original state is not so stable because this can differentiate. So somehow, so they can go to some kind of unstable or maybe subtle state in dynamical systems. So, so these are basic questions we need to address. And actually, the previous process of this oscillation in G expression and slow epigenetic process can solve this. And so basically the same model. So what I, we did is applied some input for a while. So just for few genes. So, so previous this, and so put some input for some time. And then see what happens. So taking the differentiated state, so this final fixed point state, and put this value for a while, and then what happens? So this is an example. So this is an example in the case of n equals 10. So initially, so this, so before the programming, so we have some kind of oscillatory state, and finally it goes to some fixed point states. So this is a differentiated state. And then taking this differentiated state, and in this case, we are overexpressed just three genes among 10 genes for a while. And then it starts to come back to this oscillation. And then, so we already stopped this overexpression. Then it comes back to the original state. And then the differentiation occurs later. So we could just add few overexpression, this can solve this. So in the state space or phase space picture, so initially this kind of pluripotent red state, and then in the normal development, it goes to this or this or this or this. So in this case, so five fixed point states are generated. And what we did is that take, for example, this fixed point and overexpress for a while. And this changes this state for a while took care, and then cut off this overexpression. And somehow it comes back to this original pluripotent state. And then again, differentiation starts. So it, it worked, but it's a little bit strange how unstable state is reached. So we consider a simplest example. So there is a, some kind of limit cycle generation case in the gene expression dynamics is, that is called repressionator. And that is negative and negative, negative, so expression, so control. And so this is just a standard repressionator. And that shows this limit cycle oscillation of this X, each X. And then of course we put this theta I level here. And then what we did is that, so we start from this, initial oscillation and put this theta dynamics. And then, so it goes to uh, either of these fixed points. So initial oscillation to either of these fixed points. So in this case, so theta, so one, two is positive, three is negative. And then we did this kind of, so reprogramming process. So put some kind of input to x1 or x2 or something. And then 
it comes back to the oscillation. And then this overexpression is as long as cut, then it comes back to this oscillatory state and differentiation occurs. So it works. And then, so we can see how this dynamics changes. So in this case, so just three variables in X, three variables in theta. And if we look at theta dynamics, so this theta dynamics goes something like that. So initially, theta equals zero. So that is somewhere here. So this is a kind of saddle point. So if through the dynamics of X, there is some kind of, so, so this theta equals zero is a saddle. So it's attracted to so several directions, but unstable to, towards another direction. And that is the direction that this kind of landscape changes occurs. So this, okay. So this direction of the, this theta changes, something like that. So in that sense, this is saddle. So it can be attracted, but it goes out. So, but usually we know it goes, so it puts this back to near to the saddle. It's not so easy. We need to put the state exactly to this unstable manifold. So the question is that just putting some input to X for a while, can we come back this, to this state? And actually in this case, so if we eliminate this first variable and consider theta i, <coughs> and then theta is zero, it's saddle. And so this is stable direction in this case and unstable direction. And this is something like that. And then, okay, in this case, so we show that with this average dynamics of slow, this fast oscillation, this, so instability along this unstable manifold is suppressed due to this so up and down, up and down this oscillation. It's a, so instability is somehow so averaged out. And usually, so this instability goes through this and this d theta u along this direction should be something like that. But it's, according to this, it's suppressed. And so with this, so we can see that with this slow epigenetic process and fast oscillation dynamics shows generic mechanism for dynamical systems uh, to stay or approach to the near this saddle point. So by that, we can so have this kind of reprogramming. And so this is quite general. And actually, we checked a more realistic model. So there are some, uh, so several nano and some names of these genes, and they, this seems to be corresponding to some kind of pluripotent stem cell. And so by doing that, we have shown that this kind of process again occurs. So starting from this oscillatory dynamics and differentiation and reprogram. And maybe the last goal is the previous study of cell-cell interaction and this epigenetic process. So we combined it. And actually, we did this a little bit some time ago. And actually, this is a paper by this. And so in this case, so with this realistic, yeah, 4G model plus cell-cell interaction. And again, this differentiation uh, occurred. And then, so by putting some yeah, process this, this so social interaction it's fixed, and then epigenetically fixed, and then so by overexpress it can come back to the original state. So we can explain this. Okay, so today I talked about this homeoretic epigenetic landscape, and so we show that from starting from oscillatory limit cycle state with this epigenetic process, there is some kind of hierarchical attractor generation, and that is robust. And in this case, the programming is generic. Just by control of few genes, 
And this occurs through fast oscillatory expression dynamics and slow epigenetic change. And this work is uh, so mostly done by this previous student, Yuki Matsushita, and also Tetsuko Matsushita Nakayama. OK, so I could not talk other topics in universal biology, but uh, I give a lecture in ICTP next March. So if you are interested, please come to this school. And also some students are called. OK, thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much for the very interesting talk. Now we are uh, looking for questions from the audience. Anyone uh, wants to ask a question? Okay, it seems that we don't have any questions from the audience. Uh, if this is the case, let's thank uh, Kuni again. <laughs> and see you in, in ICTP next spring. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay, with this we close our afternoon session. Now there's a poster time, so those of you who have posters, please stand by your posters and be prepared. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.